I did not think that this would happen anytime soon. We had multiple publications stating that this wouldn't happen at all, but then it showed up in studio and I couldn't believe my eyes. A fully refreshed Steam Deck, and I mean fully refreshed. Every single major component of the system is new. We have a larger OLED display. We have a new chip, a six nanometer chip, more energy efficient. We have slightly tweaked sticks. Uh, the touchpad, the speakers are better. The battery is bigger, longer battery life. We have an improved thermal system. Let's just get right into it. Uh, let's start off with the exterior dimensions because that's one of the very few things that hasn't really changed per se. The biggest difference is like the presence of this new orange power button. It just like signifies the kind of new version of it. Even the screen cutout is the same as the larger panel, but because of the thinner bezels, the old accessories all work. So the kill switch from Dbrand still fits perfectly and same with their screen protectors. All right, let's start with the displays. So this here is the previous model, like the original Steam Deck with its seven inch display. So it was a 60 Hertz panel, 400 nits, but the biggest issue with it was really the color reproduction. It just was not a particularly colorful or color accurate display. And I think when it comes to games, a lot of the kind of subtle details and visual nuance of games are just lost when you're displaying it on a mediocre screen. But with this new panel, it's a different story. We've got a 7.4 inch OLED that runs at 90 Hertz, 600 nits brightness that goes up to thousand nits for HDR content. It'll peak up there. Uh, it's more energy efficient because it's OLED. It's got way better contrast. So the benefits of this display are immediately noticeable in pretty much every game. Like bright and colorful games look awesome like you'd expect. Uh, but even dark and moody games are significantly better because the blacks are just black instead of like a gray backlit pixel. It's just so much nicer looking. And also HDR content for the games that do support it looks awesome. Like the bright elements just blast out of the screen at a thousand nits. Now this display also is a 90 Hertz panel and on games that make use of it, like this one, Dead Cells, it's just immediately noticeable. It's difficult to convey the kind of increase in frame rate on a 60 Hertz video like you're watching. But if you've just played any high refresh game, the difference from 60 to 90 is very significant. Keep in mind though, that there are other devices out there with significantly faster screens and more powerful processors. But the fact that the Steam Deck went from 60 to 90 is already a huge win in my books. Now in terms of the screen size, it's not massively larger. So it's a little bit bigger, uh, but I, I would say that the improvements that you get from the new Steam Deck do not come from the screen size, at least for me. Uh, it's also the same resolution, still 1280 by 800. It's just that the image quality is so much better. Now, one last thing, if you'll remember, Steam Decks come in three configurations. It's like the base model and then the mid tier and then the top tier, but only the mid tier and top tier are gonna get this OLED refresh. So the top tier configurations like this unit here have this anti-glare etched glass finish to them. And the purpose of it is to kind of cut down some of the reflections. So this unit here does not have that etched glass coating. So if you're in a really bright environment or a brightly lit room, sometimes those reflections can be a little bit harsh, right? But here, they're diffused a bit. The problem is though, because it's an OLED display, I feel like you lose some of the, the OLED properties. Like the, the popping colors and the really black blacks are lost because of that matte finish on that etched glass. So as a demonstration, this is, uh, it's like a screen protector. This is gonna be a very crude demonstration, but hopefully it gets the point across. If you give it a second for this screen to kind of fuse on, or the protector to fuse on. Look at the difference in the color. Like look at the black part of the menu there, right? On the left side is that etched glass. It's almost lost its true black nature because of the OLED, right? But on the right with that smooth uh, screen protector on it, it's still quite dark. So I'm just thinking if you're gonna purchase one of these things, unless you really care about brightly lit environments and you wanna cut down those reflections badly, I would opt for the regular screen without that anti-glare property. The other thing is that if you get a screen protector, you put it on, it fixes it. But I'm just saying, with the anti-glare, you lose a lot of that OLED goodness. The new device also has slightly better sticks in the sense that the rubber top has a bit of a lip to it. So it's just nicer to grip. It's also a different ball joint color. It's black instead of gray, but the shoulder buttons also had a bit of an upgrade. So on the old one, I found that if you had longer fingers, if you just pressed that shoulder in a different spot, it wouldn't be a consistent press. Like it would actuate nicely at the edges, but if you brought it up to the top, if you had like longer fingers, it became harder and harder to press. And on the new one, the location of that button and the, the actuation point is different. So it's just like consistent and it's like a tighter click, as silly as it sounds. Uh, okay, the 
haptics on this. Actually, the, they've changed the touchpad to be a little bit more accurate, a little bit more responsive, but there's also updated haptics. So they feel a lot more precise. They're just like a tighter ping as you move around. The speakers are also a little bit louder and bassier than before. All right, let's talk about performance. So the chip in here is new. It's running a six nanometer chip compared to the seven nanometer chip that was in the previous generation, but it's still running the same clock speeds and the same kind of power draw. The RAM is also still at 16 gigabytes, but it's running a little bit faster at 6,400 mega transfers per second. Now, because of that faster RAM, I was hoping that there'd be some kind of performance gains, but for my testing, if there is a performance bump, it's so slight, I would consider it insignificant, at least for most gamers. It does resume from suspended games a little bit faster though, but with that new chip, because it's six nanometers, it is a little bit more energy efficient, and because of that, you have slightly less heat. And with less heat, you have quieter fans, fans that don't come on as often, and fans that don't stay on as long. So any kind of gaming sessions were both cooler and quieter than the original Steam Deck. And then in addition to that more energy efficient chip and the more energy efficient OLED screen, we also have a 25% larger battery. It's gone from 40 watt hours to 50. So you combine all those three things, you just get better battery life. Now, Valve claims a 30 to 50% bump in battery life. From my testing, the really demanding games got a more modest battery life improvement, and the charging speeds are also a little bit faster this year. So the Steam Deck has always been easy to open, easy to repair, but this year they've done a few things to make it even better. So first, the screws. The old screw was this Phillips headed screw that I've stripped so badly on my previous Steam Deck. Uh, the new ones, are these machine Torx screws. If you know anything about Torx, you know anything about screws, that's definitely better. Now to get inside, it's just a quick pull of the side plastic area, or at least that's how I do it. And this is the inside. Now the first thing I noticed was like, okay, the battery is a very similar shape to the previous generation. This is, uh, actually I should put them like this, like the earlier part of the video. So the old one's up top, the new one is down here. So I thought, well, I was hoping that this new battery would be able to fit into the old battery spot and then people could all get 50 watt hour batteries. You can't. They look very similar in shape, but this new one's a little bit taller. And because of this framing, you wouldn't be able to fit this one into there, unfortunately. Uh, okay, let's remove the shrouding here to take a look at the internals. The first thing that you should be aware of is almost everything has changed on the inside. So the good, the good news is that, okay, it's a major refresh. The bad news is that you can't just swap out parts. You can't just pick and choose the new things and put them to the old one to kind of update it. Unfortunately, the fan is a little bit bigger, better and quieter. Uh, and then on the side here, you'll notice that the SSD is in a similar position, but different orientation. But if you remove last year's SSD, you can see the Intel Wi-Fi card that was underneath it. This year, it's a much larger Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. This is from a company called Quicktel, and it now supports Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth 5.3. And there's a dedicated antenna just for the Bluetooth signal. Now, if you look at the chip itself, it's about the same size as the seven nanometer chip from the previous generation. Now in regards to pricing, Valve is running the same kind of pricing tiers as the original Steam Deck launch. So they have a 399 base model, which remains unchanged. It's still the same original 399 model with 256 gigs of storage, but the mid tier and the top tier are these OLED refresh models with larger storage than before. So the mid tier has 512 gigs. The top tier has a terabyte of storage. I didn't even close this properly. Uh, and my thoughts on it are that I think the pricing is quite fair. I would say that considering all that you're getting, it's a very fair price. The thing that my mind goes to is like, <laughs> I just did a video <laughs> on Sony's PlayStation 5 refresh, like their updated kind of slim version. And the difference in just company mantra of what they're trying to do is wild. Like the Sony's PlayStation 5 slim seems to be just focused on, you know, some kind of monetary gain for Sony. But here, this is a crazy refresh in the sense that they put so much effort to do all these tweaks and adjustments for what the users actually want. And a lot of it was just unnecessary, but they just did it because they could. And also, 
the, the pricing. Like this could have been so much more expensive and I would, have, I would have imagined that it would have cost more. For this kind of update, but they've kept the same kind of pricing with more storage. I mean, only Valve can pull this off because of the whole Steam thing and how they own it and how they're just making money. But just, it's so interesting how Sony did that and Valve did this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna wrap this up with a little demo of the case. Actually, something I keep wanting to talk about. This is 30 grams lighter than the previous version. I kept wanting to say that over the course of this entire video, but it didn't have the opportunity. It's a little bit lighter. It's not a significant difference though. Uh, it's noticeable, but I would argue not particularly significant. So this is the new case and it's a two piece case. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, but it makes it sound like a bikini. Two piece in the sense that, well, it opens up like a regular case. It's got like the Velcro up front and you can open it up, white microfiber, but it also has a second functionality where there's an inner case and this inner case allows you to transport the product in a lighter package. So this, uh, right, this is a little bit more compact than that big case. So it's like a two in one case, but when you use this kind of slimmer case, you don't have the ability to store the AC adapter in the back, like the big case, like the original one. But yeah, a two piece case, but there you have it. But if you are interested in one of these handheld devices, do keep in mind that the Steam Deck, as awesome as it is, even this new OLED version, it's not gonna be as powerful as some of those Windows handhelds. If you're looking for AAA gaming with the smoothest and best frame rates, those will do a better job than this thing. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video.